Our Savior has declared that a man should leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. By his apostles, he has instructed those who enter into this relation to cherish a mutual esteem and love, to bear with each other infirmities and weaknesses, to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, in honesty and industry, to provide for each other and for their household in temporal things to pray for and encourage each other in things pertaining to God and to live together as heirs of His grace. For so, as much as these two persons have come to this house of worship to be made one in the holy relationship of Mary, it is understood that neither of them nor others present are aware of any just reason why the contracting parties may not be lawfully joined. I charge ye both before our God and Father, the searcher of all hearts, that if either of you know any reason why you may not lawfully be joined together in matrimony, you do now make it known. Or should any persons be joined together otherwise than in harmony with the will of God, their union is not less of him. Let us pray. Our Father, whose presence brings happiness to every condition, and whose favor students every late relations in life, we pray unto you to be present and to favor the two persons that they may be truly joined in the honorable state of marriage. As they have been brought together by your providence, sanctify them by your spirit and grant them full understanding of their new relationship. And risk their lives by your grace that they may enjoy the comforts, undergo the cares, endure the trials, and perform the duties of life together as a Christian people under your guidance and protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may all be seated. I believe most of you have attended a lot of uh, weddings uh, like this and I am absolutely convinced that everyone are excited to see this wonderful couple being united on this day. I would like to share something about what marriage is all about. Where did we get this from? When did this thing start? Well, based on the scriptures, it gives us a clear information when the first wedding actually started. God himself performed the marriage and everyone knows, even the whole world knows that there was an Adam and Eve who was created by God. And from there, it started a family in the world. But let me first share with you today the uh, three great significance of what wedding or marriage is all about. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, the Bible says that, you know, after God created Adam and all those animals that Adam oversees, when he was not yet created, the Bible says Adam did not find any suitable helpmate among those animals that God ever created. And so God put Adam to sleep. And when Adam woke up, he saw this beautiful woman, just like the bride we have here today. And Adam said, Mamma Mia. He was so surprised to see a beautiful woman right in front of him. And he said, truly, is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. The purpose of God creating the woman to be with the man, the Bible says, 
to be a helpmate, not to be a servant, which, you know, there are other countries that they see the woman as a second class. I'm not going to mention any nation. And if you go to another nation, why they are not just only a second class, but they have no class at all. But do you know the Bible says that a woman actually is the fulfillment or satisfaction of one of the most important needs of men. That's why I've heard a lot of women, men will never survive without a woman in their life. Is that true, husband? Oh, you don't say amen now here. <laughs> so one of the great significance of wedding or marriage, please remember this husband. Let me bring it back to the first stage of your decision. You and your wife, when you decided to take this vow together before the presence of God, when you say, I do, not the lie. God fulfills and satisfies your one of the most important needs in your life. So you have to see your wife as important to you. They're not your servants, they're not your slaves, but they are your helpmates. In other words, husband does the hard job, not the wife. That's why today, you know, things are changing. It's the wife that tells the husband what to do now. In Tagalog, we call it Tigas, you know. I don't know what's the translation in English, but in Tagalog, it says Tigas Aing, Tigalaba, Tigaluto, Tigalina. Okay, so in English, can you just translate it to something beside you? Okay, the second one, it is the expression of God's love to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I always take this opportunity to let the people know that, you know, maybe some of you are wondering whether God loves you or not, you know, with what you've been through in life. Maybe with your present condition right now, you question the love of God for you. But you know, this occasion represents and it is actually the expression of God's love over you. There's other uh, scriptures in the Bible, which is in Romans 5, 8. Paul says that this is how God demonstrated His love toward you and me. The ultimate proof of God's love. Just to convince the world that God loves men. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So if some of you are thinking of, you know what, I think I, I truly need God, I truly need some spiritual things in my life, I think I really need God in my life, so let me just clean myself first and then come to God. You know what, that's a wrong perception of you about God. You know, you can come to God just as you are, and God, and you will live the way God wants you to be. You know, God loves you just the way you are, regardless of what your past is, regardless of what your behavior in the past, God wants you to know that He loves you. You know, the Bible says that, you know, what these two persons have toward one another is a love that they just simply inherited from God. That's why every human being knows how to love and how to express their love toward one another. There's what we call parental, parental love. There's what we call 